Well, let me tell you something, brother. Snort, snort, snort. Cody. Drip, snort, snort. I got the drip. Yeah. Thursday's day stream is Dragon Age Veilguard. Thursday night is the premiere of my show, the political show you've all been waiting for, exclusively on Kick. DS Politics. So let's talk about it, because now I've officially, uh, you know, scheduled it, and I want everyone to obviously be excited for this, all right? So how is this going to work? First of all, the show will be around 7 p.m. Pacific time on Thursday night. It'll only be streamed on my kick channel, DSP Gaming Real. So if you're interested in this brand new effort and endeavor, please be sure to go, uh, you know, follow the channel over on kick. Uh, it's it's going to, you know, you have to follow to talk in the chat. So please do, all right? Now. It's only going to be on Kick, and I'm curious with a show that I'm streaming exclusively on Kick how it'll do. Right now, my audience is majorly split between Kick and YouTube, and I can tell you right now that YouTube audience is much bigger than Kick. You know, for example, right now I have over 260 viewers on YouTube, and I have like 30 viewers on Kick. The other day when I was doing the PS5 Pro stuff, I had over 400 viewers on YouTube, and I had like 50 viewers on Kick. Right, so that's what I mean. The audience still seems to prefer to stay on YouTube, but in this case, it's a kick exclusive show. Since it's politics, I want to keep it off DSP gaming and out of my gaming content whatsoever. You won't hear these kind of topics discussed on this channel, right? So if you have absolutely no desire to talk about politics at all, you could just not show up and you're good. It won't spill. I'm telling you right now, the content will not spill into uh, the other content that I'm doing. You're not going to see political content you know, here when I'm doing my podcast or when I'm playing games and stuff, it's going to be saved exclusively for the show. In fact, it makes sense. If anything's happening in politics, save the topic for the show, right? That's the time to discuss it in detail, all right? So that's going to be fun. If you can make it on kick on Thursday night, it's going to be about two hours. Now, what will the topics be that will be discussed? So I have three hot topics to talk about this coming Thursday night. Topic number one, how did the Democrats manage to lose the 2024 presidential election in the United States? And I'm going to have some stuff to watch with you, and we're going to react to a few things together, and we're going to talk it out. It's, good, it's an interactive show, to make this clear. Yes, I'll be talking about politics and the like, but also there's going to be people who are going to be able to chat with me, and I'm, I'm going to be doing shout-outs for contributions, and it's going to be an interactive show. So I'm sure many people are going to have different opinions and things to say about this topic, okay? So that's number one. Number two, um, we're also going to be doing uh, a topic. Listen to this one. There have been mean text messages that have been getting sent out across the country since Donald Trump won the presidential election. And for some reason, actual mainstream news is covering it. I want to show you the mean text messages and we're going to analyze them and talk about them today uh, on the show because yes they are incredibly politically powered and charged and i couldn't believe i was seeing this as a story in my local news and they keep running with it and even adding to the story and i'm like what so you're gonna see i don't want to spoil the story i want to save it for thursday but when you see this you're gonna be like what the hell and then another thing there's one other thing that we're gonna talk about I don't even know how to go about this because it like it makes me my jaw drop. So now they're saying, get this. If you want to do charity, you have to do it in such a specific way to be sure that you're being culturally sensitive. I won't even go further than that because I want to show you the details of the story. All right. So this is going to be a very interesting show on Thursday night, okay? I hope you'll join me exclusively on Kick on DSP Gaming Reel this Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific time for the first other episode of DS Politics. All right, enough of that. So anyway, yes, yeah, so that's going to be a fun one. And now what I'm going to do after the show ends, I'm going to clip highlights and segments from the show 
And over the course of the week, I'm going to have those go live over on the DSP Reacts channel. So there won't be ongoing content anymore of the random clips stuff from my DSP versus the internet show because we're retiring that on Monday. But now every week, you'll see highlights from the DS Politics show on DSP Reacts over the course of the week. Okay? I think this is a great way to go about it. That way, there will still be content on the channel for the time being. All right? Now, what we're going to do, excuse me, what we're going to do on the show, we're going to discuss ideas of how people who basically support my content will be able to be a part of the show. For example, here's what I'm thinking. If you become a submissions tier member of my DSP Reacts channel, you can have a thread every week where you can submit clips you'd like to, me to watch and review for the politics show. So you could say, Phil, were you aware of this news story that happened across the country? Can you comment on this, this current event that happened or this political thing that happened on the show? So this is awesome because this is going to allow you to have interaction. Now, I'm not guaranteeing that I'm going to watch the clip, but I'll review everyone's submissions. I'll try to find the best ones, and I'll put together a show based on your suggestions, but also the hot topics that I want to talk about every week on the show. This way, there's still incentive to become a member on the Reacts channel. It won't just kill the channel entirely overnight, all right? But it'll only affect the submissions to your memberships. What we will probably do is the Ultra members may have some input into the upcoming long-form React shows that I'm going to start doing in December, okay? So it's a big shift, I know. It's not Clips Reacting anymore. We're going to have political stuff every Thursday, and then we're going to have uh, long-form Reacting going on at some point, all right? Pretty good, right? All right. So I'm excited. I hope you are too. DS Politics premiering on Kick exclusively Thursday night. And then you can see the clips for it over the course of the week uh, on DSP Reacts. And starting next week after this first show ends is probably when we'll start. Hey, let's start doing content uh, where you or let's start doing uh, incentive where if you're a member on the DSP Reacts channel, you can now submit clips for the political show. Okay. Fair enough. I think that would be good. What's funny is Felix the Maid says, you can't do legit politics on Kick. You better off streaming on Rumble if you want zero issues because of terms of service. What exactly is it you think I'm going to be saying? I'm not, listen, my political show will not be offensive. It's not me going on saying, well, by the way, I don't, I don't stand for all these things and screw these people and they're all, you know, what? Have you not listened to words that I've said for the last, like, you know, 16 years that I'm not that kind of person? That I want people to be happy, that I wish that everyone could be happy, because if everyone was able to be happy, probably people wouldn't be at each other's throats, and we wouldn't have such a divisive part time of our country right now. Like, what exactly do you think I'm going to say on my political show? I mean, do I sound like a political extremist to you? <laughs> like, what the hell, dude? And keep in mind, the, the people who have been doing politics for ages are the ones who got me on kick in the first place, <laughs> right? Like, this is not over... Oh, oh, by the way, I'm just making this crazy decision overnight. Kino Casino has been covering political shit for years on kick, and they're fine, so what are you talking about? Anyway, all right. Uh, Automata says, will there be a tier on React that guarantees your political clip being watched? Currently, no. The whole point is... I want to be talking about topics that I feel like I can add to. So let's say people submit clips and there's like 30 clips to review and I skim through them all and I pick five to watch on the show. I'm not going to be like, oh, 30 people can submit clips. Now we're forced that the whole political show is me watching the clips. Then it's just back to being DSP versus the internet again, right? And that's not the point. Mm. That's not the point, okay? So yeah, we don't want to do it that way. Did it fit perfectly? It did. The box fit absolutely perfectly in the closet. There was a spot and it went bloop, right in. Like books on a bookshelf, it just went zoop, fit right in very nicely. <laughs> All right. I'll see you tonight for uh, Call of Duty. Sounds good. No Supreme vibes. Could I do a president presidential tier list based on my knowledge? Uh, it would be a pretty short list because I only know about presidents who did things while I was uh, alive. I really am not a presidential scholar uh, in that regard. <clears throat> Cool. Uh, what's up, Perry? How you doing this morning? 
I don't know anything about anyone named Synthetic Man, to be clear here. The point of the show is not going to be me reacting to other political creators. It's going to be me reacting to actual news and politics, all right? So, get, let's get the expectations set here. This is not me making fun of other people. It's me actually commentating on stories and the like, okay? The funny part, Cosmos, like, he says, So, how much engagement do you think you'll get on Kick for the show? And do you think it'll be a success? How do I know? Here, here's the truth. Everyone for years has asked me for this show, correct? It's been like three, four years. Will I ever get into politics? Will I talk about it? And I'm like, well, maybe, maybe, maybe. And now with the election over with and the dust settling, this is exactly what I told you I would do. I said, let's wait. Let's see how the election goes. Let's wait for the dust to settle. And when it goes a certain way and I feel like it's safe to actually come out and talk about stuff, then I will. But it's going to be separated from my gameplay content so that way there's no crossover and no one will be bombarded with bullshit, right? So that's how we're doing it. I'm, I mean, this has all been a systematic thing. It's like, first, I dip my toe into the realm of doing crossovers and different topics. Then I start streaming on kick. Then it's the possibility of starting a new show on kick. You know, it's all, it's a little progressive thing, right? So we're going, we're moving a little further, a little further, a little further. Now we're going to try. We're going to see what happens. Perhaps the show will go incredibly well. And I'll find a new audience of people who are excited and engaged to hear this kind of content from me. Maybe the show will tank, right? If anything, here's the thing. On kick. If you want to qualify for the best levels of monetization, including getting verified and then later on even being offered to be part of their like streamer program, you have to have a certain level of average viewership. The thing is, my viewership is split. I've got a certain group of people who want to keep watching me on YouTube and have, right? So because of that, I still got a decent number of people watching me on YouTube every single day. But some have gone over to kick. And I have a few new viewers on Kick, so it's kind of this weird split. But because of this, I'm not getting enough average viewers on Kick to support me ever getting those higher tiers. I basically am always going to have just the base level tier, and that's it. If I have a show that's dedicated on Kick, that now I can bring in 100, 200 viewers even, right? Like, that would be my goal. If I get 200 viewers on the political show, I'd be pretty pleased with myself to, to know that for a different kind of content that I've never done before, that I'm getting a solid audience for it. Okay, so if I get like 200 viewers, I'd be stoked and we would see, you know, is it viable now? If you get that much viewer, will, will now my average viewership go up? Will I be able to possibly qualify for these other programs and the like, right? We'll have to see. So let's see how it goes right now and play it by ear. I don't have any super high expectations. I'm not expecting to get a thousand viewers on my first political show on kick, you know, but I, I'm hoping that people will now see this will be a different kind of content that I'm willing to tackle and try and see how it works and go from there. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's not like, here's the difference, right? With, again, I, I know I keep bringing this up because it's just a good case in point. Take a look at side scrollers, right? They tried to bring back, I say they, it was just Craig because he brought it back no one else from his original show. He tried to bring back a gaming show and it flopped. Why? Because he's not a gamer. He tried to bring back a pop culture and gaming show with no knowledge of games. I mean, why did you think it was going to work? It was idiotic, right? So then what he did is he completely spun his idea into politics, completely white right-wing conservative. He did it on purpose because he figured being as extreme as possible would get an audience, and it worked. Gullible people bought into his bullshit, and now he has a, a, an audience of thousands of people, okay? With me, I already have a successful business. Right? I'm not failing. I'm not trying to bring something back and it's failing, so now I have to run towards this topic and banking everything on it. That, that's not my case at all. I'm kind of the actual op opposite, right? Where I already have success, but now people are asking me as I grow up and I get older and more mature to delve into other kinds of content. I've tried reacting. Now I'm trying political. We're trying different things, and we're going to see what works and what doesn't. It doesn't have to work, but if it does, I'd be happy. To now be known as not only a podcaster and a, and a gameplay streamer, but also having a successful political show, I'd be happy for that. But I don't want it to be my end-all, be-all. Like I said, I think doing it like once a week right now is perfect. That way we could save up the interesting topics of the week, talk, talk about all of them in one show, as opposed to, oh, every single day I got to be bringing this up and scraping the bottom of the barrel for content. I don't want to be doing that. This will allow me, especially if you have input, if people are submitting clips and things, it'll allow me to try to take in information from other places and weigh and balance the stories I want to talk about and cover and things like that. So uh, that's how it's going to work. I don't have any over-the-top expectations at all. I would be happy with a couple hundred viewers if we can even get that. 
And obviously for the show to be supported, it's going to be a normal stream for me. So I'm going to be looking to hit my goal or whatever. And as long as all that happens, I will consider it a success. Diversity right now, diversifying my content is going to work way better than just doing one style. Okay. I tried the interview thing. I'm going to be honest. People are pussies. They don't want to be interviewed because they're pussies. And for years, they all wanted to punch down on me. But now that people would actually listen to my opinions and my take and allow me to clap back at people who've been nasty to me, no people want to be interviewed by me. They're all afraid. So forget that. So we'll do something different. Queen of Hearts says, one thing that I love about you, you always have a balanced, uh, you're a balanced person. You're slow to make changes, but you make them when they make sense, not just to write a current trend. I don't, I, if you haven't noticed, I am not the kind of guy that likes to jump on viral trends. I'm not the kind of guy that jumps on memer games, right? Oh, I got to play this game because everyone's playing it for the week and then no one plays it again, right? I, I just, I'm not about that. And I want to basically branch out as I get older, but at the right times. If I had jumped on the bandwagon of everyone doing political content when it was hot, then people could easily say he's only doing it for that reason. Now you can see the election's over. Now we have like four years where I can ease into this. I can hone my craft. You know what I'm saying? Like I can get good at it now and hopefully do something that's a little different from what everyone else is doing. And it could be a good show that people enjoy for my audience. And hopefully we get more. I would love to get some of the viewers from Casino who aren't going to be watching their stuff on those nights because I'm, I'm like purposefully, I'm trying to schedule this show to not, you know, backstab those guys. I don't want to step on their toes. They've done a lot for me and I want to be sure that this show is not going to split the audience in any way. I mean, it's funny because some people are like, well, they're way bigger than you. You're not going to split the audience. You are uh, you understand, I know that, but I still might. There might be a few people who want, are, uh, dude, I want to see Phil's first show. Casino streams several times a week, the same kind of content. Phil's doing this for the first time. I want to see it. That could step on their toes. You might have people come support me instead of them. I don't want that to happen. That's fucked up. Right? I owe those guys a lot. That's why I'm trying to do it in a way that it doesn't split on them. You know what I'm saying? Bookworm's correct. He says, if Phil had done an election night coverage stream like that, he would have made like $500 to $1,000. You're right. I would have. It would have been the same as like me doing one of these marathons. Look, the Halloween marathon, I made over 400 bucks on the stream and with the revenue from the, from the ads and everything, I made around 500 bucks that day. You know, any, any big marathon I do, I make a good amount. I, that's what I would have made if I did a politics stream, you know, but... I wasn't there yet. Maybe now, you know what I'm saying? Now I can, I, if we're going to cover this stuff and, and regularly have content about it, then I could do that kind of stuff, right? <clears throat> uh, Automata, I'm not watching. Yeah, Automata had a premise, but I'm not going to do it. He says, what you should do is watch side scrollers and tackle every topic Craig top, top tackles on his show but do it from your perspective rather than his biased one and show that you can do it better. I'm not watching his show. <laughs> There's absolutely 0% chance I would ever watch that fucking fake-ass grifter show. You know? I, I'm not an idiot. It's just it, it, incredibly preposterous how dumb people are and get fooled by stuff. You know, it's just as bad as my detractors getting fooled and sending the dude money. Now you got dumbass conservatives who believe that he's for real too. I mean, they're just so dumb and gullible. I, I'm not. I'm not even watching for a second. I'm not even gonna give him a second of attention. Okay. <clears throat> okay. But here, but Double M. See again. Double M doesn't get it. He goes, yeah, but let's say you take a few dozen viewers from them, right? It's not gonna hurt them, dude. The, the few dozen viewers that I take might be the supporters for that night, right? Maybe there's people who like the political stuff and they're going to come and watch my show instead of Kino Casino that particular night. And now they decide, well, hey, it's Phil's first night doing politics. I'm going to drop him a sub bomb. And it could have gone to the casino. That You know how fucked up that is? In my opinion, anyway, you know, I feel like that would be messed up. To split the audiences doesn't make sense. Now, I'm not saying in the future I'm always going to have to be 100% sure to not stream the same time as them because that's impossible. If you guys don't know, Kino Casino streams random days. They don't actually do the same days every week. Like me, I'm pretty trying to be consistent, but they're kind of all over the place depending on what's happening in news and stuff. Right now, they're streaming, but likely by the end of the week, they're going to have days off. So that's why I'm doing it like that. Um, so yeah, I don't, I, but I the way I see it, I'm not going to step on the toes of people who've been so gracious to me. You know, at least this first show, 
at, let's be honest, after the first show, it might not be successful and it drops off and nobody gives a shit, right? But I'm not, for this first show, I'm going to do the right thing. And I already ran it by them and it looks like we're all good for Thursday night. So, I received a $4.20 tip from Lady Charisma. I've actually made a kick account for this, but I fear chat might lean too much to one side. I've seen stuff in chat over the years. I hope we're just trolls. Nothing on you. It's a fear I have. I have high hopes for a new project, and I'll try to be there uh, for my view since I do uh, a few years of political science at my university. I am outright going to say this. Everyone is allowed. Everyone can have their own opinion. I want diverse opinions on this political show. Understand that I'm going to be honest with my takes and opinions and open, and you might not agree with them, and that's okay. I'm not some asshole who's going to be like, oh, so just because you disagree with me, now you're my enemy, and now we're going to have to be at each other's throats and shit. I'm not that kind of guy. And the whole point of the show, I feel, is to have open discussion about these topics because I think a lot of shows, sadly, are tunnel vision, right? It's just a yes chamber. It's like everyone just echo me and what I have to say instead of, hey, here's what I think, but what do you think? And let's go back and forth and maybe maybe open each other's eyes and perspectives a little bit more about stuff too, right? Like I have these three particular topics to talk about. Like I said, it's, it's, we're going to talk about the election and how the Democrats lost it. We're going to talk about this text message going around that's becoming political and front page news in places and we're going to talk about actual like cultural demands on charity and i'm not explaining that because i want to tell you when i when we get to the story so i have three stories to cover on thursday i think that's enough for two hours like I, i'd be shocked if we even cover all three stories fully right so uh and then from there i want your takes on it and then, like i said we're going to open it up so people can actually submit clips for next week's show and we're going to play it that way and see how it works and see if we can get a, a rotation going of good topics and stuff. I think it'll work. You saw Troy Baker and the guys from Hasbin Hotel. I've never seen Hasbin Hotel. I think we watched the trailer for it once. Uh, but Troy Baker's been in everything, right? Troy Baker, one of the most well-versed voice actors ever. So awesome there. <clears throat> what are some opinions are considered radical? There, there are always going to be radical opinions. But it's about how you how you handle that, right? It's about listening and then, you know, basically not. Okay, my philosophy has always been: I just want everyone to be happy. Okay, everyone should be happy, but also if you're going to be happy, you can't step on everyone else's toes and make them unhappy. I feel there's a live and let live mentality out there that can work if people would just fucking give it a chance instead of just being like, well. Since, you know, I don't agree with you, you're my hated enemy, and now we have to be at each other's throats, and it's all my side and not your side, you know, if you're not with me, you're against me. I hate that shit. So we're going to see how, how it translates. I feel like we're talking too much about it because you're kind of, I don't want to spoil anything, right? <laughs> you want me to convert the lefties in my state for the next election? Good luck. Good luck with that. This state is so far leaning to the left, to the blue. It's like impossible. Like there's people who legit think that like their lives are ending now because Trump has been reelected. It's like, wait a minute. You were alive during the last Trump presidency. <laughs> Was it the end of the world then? You know what I mean? These people are just, they're, they're out of control with the weird things that they say. Like, come on, man. Anyway, that's going to be one of the, where do you see one of the stories we're covering about this text message going around? It's like, I can't wait. It's going to be a fun show. Okay. I got the drip going. 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 I got the drip. It's Go. like a faucet that's dripping. You can't make it stop. So what do you want me to do? Have a have a mute button that every second I'm tapping the mute button just in case I, I'm gonna have to clear. Like this is what I mean. These, these dumb kids. This is what it is. It's dumb kids. 